Right. So we just evaluated all of our individual services to understand a little bit more uh, about the properties of those services. All right. And we were, we we're looking at specifically normal vectors and surface curvature. All right. So now is where it gets a little bit more fun. Um, we're going to actually panelize uh, those subsurfaces so that we're, we're working with quads. We can start with our quads um, and start to look at another set of properties that are uh, relative to quad-based geometry. And what I mean by quads are just four-sided um, surfaces where all the edges of those of that surface are straight, right? So simple. It may be planar, it may be not. We'll get into that in a second. But it's just a quad-based surface. All right, and a quad-based surface, we're going to understand this um, surface relative to a plane. That's how we test for if it's flat or not, if it's planar or not. So a plane is just any two-dimensional space. And we've been working with planes now, uh, specifically surface frames and XY planes uh, for during the webinar. Um, and it, so planes include the standard top view as well as any non-world-oriented plane defined by uh, either three points or an origin and two vectors, etc. So again, here's our uh, kind of representation of a custom plane. And it has a two-dimensional space, which we'll call X and Y. And if you move away from that plane, you're moving in the Z, the local Z uh, direction. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make some quads. And we're going to test them for planarity. So you can see here the hatch indicates where the planar version of this quad would be. And the quad, as we created it, ended up with a gap where the fourth point of our quad is not on our plane. So we're going to make quads, and we're going to test them for planarity so we can know where in our collection of quads there are, um, there are quads that have a kind of a distortion to them. They're out of plane, right? So um, going back to applications, if this was, um, let's say, a facade or a model you were trying to produce, um, where things are flat, which is blue here, that's very easy to create out of flat material. Like, let's say, I'm going to make a paper model out of this. Or, um, or alternatively, where things are red, it's going to be a little bit harder for my material to deal with. Or if it's a facade glass, like I can't get my glass to fit within the tolerance if it's got a bend too much to fit into the shape, right? So we're going to look at how we might test, first create, and then test each one of these quads for how planar it is. All right, so let's bounce back over to Rhino. And we're going to open up the next file, which is 1-4. And again, it's going to start from my ISO trim subsurfaces, and then we're going to do this part here, right? Some of this which looks familiar relative to our last file. All right, so I'm going to save as my working file. And for the sake of time, we're going to do what we've been doing before. And we're going to delete everything up to the subsurfaces, which are labeled here. This is what your file should look like at this point. So I'll give you a second to um, get your file situated. And go ahead and take a look at the note here uh, while you're doing that, which just says that what we're going to do is we're going to use the vertices of our subsurface to create simple quad surfaces from four points. And we're going to look at uh, analyzing and visualizing the property of those quad surfaces that is their planarity. All right, so if we take a look down here at the, um, the ISO trim, we want to look at how we might access the parts of this surface, each one of these surfaces. Right? So right now we have a collection of subsurfaces. We want to start to work with the parts of the surface. So here's a challenge question. How might we get at the parts of the surface? If you have a suggestion on what object from the surface tab we might use, Go ahead and type it into the uh, question window.
All right. So um, if we want to start to work with the parts of every surface, uh, we can think back to uh, the earlier part of the presentation where we we're talking about what, how we control the shape of a surface, right? The shape of a surface is controlled by control points and control uh, the con corresponding control cage, right? But if we look at, let's say, this surface right here, there's more to it in terms of the geometry of that surface than the control points in the control cage. Right? What are the parts of this single surface? Well, there are the four edges, right? There's the face that describes that surface. There's only one face in this case. And not previewed right now, but we will be in a second, the points or the vertices that describe the corners of that surface. So to access those parts of the surface geometry, let's go to surface analysis and grab the BREP components object. As we look here, uh, the kind of flaming cylinder uh, icon, if we connect our surface to the B input, it gives us exactly that, the face, the edges, and the vertices. So this gives us the four vertices for every subsurface. All right, so faces, edges, and vertices. All right, so what we want to do is we want to redraw a quad surface based on those four points. And here in the vertices output, we have, for each one of those surfaces, four points. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a way to um, take those four points that are coming out of that output and use them to create a four-point surface, which can be found on the surface freeform tab. All right, so this asks for point A, B, C, and D going around the surface to actually specify the quad. So now we just need to go from this collection of points, which are on a data tree. Each data path has four points on that list. So we need somehow to, uh, we need to specify a way for these four points to get split out into four individual wires that can go into this object. So what we're going to do is first take a look at how these points are structured. If I look at the params utilities param viewer object and use that to connect to V, now I have, in my case, 225 branches. That means I have 225 surfaces, each with four vertices. Now what I want instead is four branches with 225 items on each branch. So I essentially want my rows to become columns and my columns to become rows in terms of how my data tree is structured. So that object that allows us to do that is called the flip matrix. So if we go to sets tree flip matrix, we take our vertices in. Now we have four data paths, each with 225 vertices. So instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, we now have all of the lower left-hand points, all the lower right-hand points, the upper right-hand points, and the upper left-hand points. All right, so now we just need to um, take each one of those paths and split them out into A, B, C, and D. The way we can do that is under sets, tree, explode tree, and we can connect the flip matrix into D, and if we right click and say match outputs, now all four of our outputs are located on the object, and we can just connect right across to A, B, C, and D. Okay, so now instead of curvy panels, we now have quad panels, which are at least more flat um, and are straight along all the edges. And so we're starting to have these uh, panels be more, a little bit more rationalized. All right, so I'll take a second and we'll label all of the objects we just created, right? This was our BREP components.
This was our flip matrix. This was our explode tree. And this was our four point surface. Okay.